Hello and welcome to a screencast about WebWork, which is the online homework system that the math department uses at Grand Valley State University. So hopefully your professor gave you a link to this or you can use the URL up here at the top, either way. Um, but on here, maybe on their Blackboard site they gave you a direct link to their class or maybe you just will go to this page. You can also just Google Grand GVSU web work and I think this page pops up. But you'll notice on here that there are a lot of classes. So you want to make sure that even if your professor gave you a direct link that you are actually logging into the correct section. I've seen many students students come in with questions where they're saying, oh, it's not working, it's not working. Well, that's because they're in the wrong class. So <laughs> you have a certain roster for each class, just like on Blackboard. All right, so we have 097 classes, we have 110 classes. You're going to pick all those. I'm going to pick the 110 master because that's the class I'm technically enrolled in, even though I'm the instructor. Okay, so now that I've picked my class, and you could tell up here at the top, it'll say Math 110 Master or Math 110 Section 5 or whatever you want for your particular class. Um, it saved my username and password, so I want to kind of mess with this a little bit. Um, usernames are, are case sensitive, and you want to make sure to always use lower cases. So you notice if I use it uppercase F, and I'm Frobish by the way, so Marsha Frobish is my M, Frobish M is my login. If I use a capital F on here, you notice it says invalid user ID or password. No, okay. So it wanted everything lowercase and you use the exact same username and password that you use to get on all the computers at Grand Valley, you use to get on Blackboard, um, and lots of other places too. So just make sure everything is lowercase. Otherwise that can cause lots of problems. All right, so once we get into our class, fingers crossed, here we are. Um, so once you actually get in, yeah, remember, this is the instructor site. So I have some features that you don't have. And then I also have all the assignments that we've ever done for this class. So <laughs> bear with me while I look at my whole big list here. Um, but as you, once you get a problem set assigned to you, you can go in here at any point in time and go back and rework the problems. You can go back and finish the set if you just want to do, like let's say you got started on problem one and then you had to leave your computer for some reason. You know, you can come back and finish problem two. It's not like it's gonna, it's not gonna kick you out or anything. I mean, you might have to log back in again. Um, another handy feature that some of my students have used is this download PDF option up here at the top. So some of them like to work on paper first and then they go back and put their answers in. So that's a nice way too. You'll also notice here that it's got a due date and a due time. So all of this, this information is on every single homework set. So that's kind of a nice feature to look at. Um, on here, so it's got the name of the problem, which, I mean, whatever, that doesn't really matter. The number of attempts that you've already done, okay, so I haven't worked on any of these yet, so that's why they all say zero. The remaining attempts I have, so all of these problems have unlimited attempts. So let me go back to a different homework set, and bear with me while I scroll down and find it. Exponential graphs. And I want problem, oh, you notice on here it already looks different on this main homework set page. It says unlimited for this problem. This one only has one, this one has one, this one has two. So let's say you didn't notice that on this main problem, you know, this main problem page here. In problem number four, you notice it also has a red part that says you only get one attempt at this problem. So the one biggest thing with web work that I have found is you actually need to read, which sometimes is more difficult than others, especially if you're excited to do the problem. You know, you might be just looking at the math, not looking at any of the other details of it. So make sure you do read the details. Um, this problem, like I said, had it up here in red. And then other problems, and this problem isn't a good one because it says this homework set is closed. But down here it will say how many attempts you have left. Okay, so make sure you do pay attention to that kind of stuff. And this problem only has one option or one attempt because it's a multiple choice and there's only three choices. So we don't want you just guessing willy-nilly about stuff. Um, another interesting thing about web work, so and you notice too how I'm going back and forth with all these things, you can click on this Math 110 master, or over here you can also click on homework sets. That'll take you back to that main page too. 
Um, let's see, so again, bear with me while I find the problem here. I want 1.7. Problem number 5. Okay, so again, these all have all unlimited problem or unlimited attempts, so that's good. Problem 5. And don't worry about the math at all here. I, I'm just trying to point out some pitfalls. So as you're reading, and hopefully you're reading the question, it says find a function, blah, 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 if n is the number of copies made. And then you notice down here it uses function notation, which maybe you know, maybe you don't. But this variable in the parentheses is the variable you had better put in there. Okay, so let's make up some function. Doesn't really matter if it's correct or not. How about 2x minus 4? Okay, just to give us a function. But what variable did I use? I used x. Okay, so when I click on check answer, WebWork gives me this crazy message. It says variable x is not defined in this context. Okay, so instead of you thinking that web, maybe you know this function is correct, instead of you thinking WebWork is wrong, you have to make sure to interpret what it's telling you. So variable x is not defined means you need to use the variable that they gave us. Okay, so now I'm going to change that to an n, and it's lowercase n. You'll notice that, lowercase in those parentheses. When I click on check now, it still says I'm incorrect, because obviously I just willy-nilly made up a function here. But you notice it doesn't have that goofy error message. Okay, so at least I know I've got the right variable now, so now somehow my function is wrong. All the years I've been working with web work, web work is very rarely wrong. Okay, so there's something you are putting in incorrect that's causing issues. So, you know, bear with it. Okay, another issue that I see, and again, this is a reading thing, and I'm going to go back here, is decimal places. Oh boy, that's always a fun one. So, but again, bear with me while I find the next section I want. Exponential modeling, here we go. So I want problem number three. Unlimited attempts. That's good, because this one's going to take us a few. All right, so find a function that best fits. Again, don't worry about the math here. But it says use exact values or decimals correct to four places. OK, now when you're actually doing this problem, I mean, it's got an infinite number of decimals. So, but let's pretend like we didn't read that. OK, and let's say I start typing in my function. Oh, but it remembers some of my previous answers. So let's say I type it in like that. So this is my base that goes on forever. And that's actually, you know, we'll see what happens. We click on show correct answers. Oh, wrong. OK, oh, let me go back to my calculator or graphing device here. And OK, I see now there's a 4. Oh, OK, let's see if this one works any better. Trying to be a little bit more accurate. Oh, but I only use two decimals. It wants four. Okay, so let me try another one. Let's stick an eight in there. Check answers. Ding, ding, ding. Okay, so even though those answers aren't super far off, you know, okay, well, it depends on what kind of off you're talking about. But 1.1 versus 1.14 versus 1.148, you know, uh, yeah, they're really not that far off, but web work wants four decimal places, so you better give it that. Using the same problem, um, and up here you notice that web work changed my parentheses to a time sign, and then it moved that x inside, okay? Totally does not matter sometimes about parentheses. <laughs> Other times, though, it matters a lot. So let's go back to the same problem. And again, don't worry about how I'm putting stuff in. But let's say I'm putting my problem like this. Okay, and again, you may or may not know if this is correct, but I want it to be negative 4 out here front for my coefficient. I want 4 to be my base, and I want my exponent to be x over 10. Okay, when I click on check solutions, oh. And you notice here it gives you a nice little preview, so make sure you actually look at that too. Um, it's got the x in the exponent, but the 10 somehow is in the denominator of the whole function. I only wanted it in the denominator of the exponent. Oh, okay, so I gotta go back in and fix these parentheses. So now if I do that, and don't hit enter or return by the way, it just frustrates you. Go down, click select or correct, and bam, we're good, okay? So parentheses are a lot like the calculator or any other graphing device you might have used. You need to make sure to tell it what to do very specifically. 
Okay, web work will always follow order of operations, so if you don't tell it to put something in a different place, it will do the correct order of operations. All right, one more error that I see a lot, and again, let me find the right one. Here we are. Look at all these problems we have ready for you guys. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> all right, exponential modeling, problem number one. Oh, and did you guys notice here, it says you only have two attempts. Okay, got to pay attention. Although here it says only one attempt, but oh, whatever, close enough. We don't have very many. <laughs> okay, again, don't worry about the math, but let's say the answer for this problem was 1,120. Okay, that looks like a perfectly legitimate answer to me. When I click check, or try that again. When I click on check answer, there we go. You notice over here, oh, we have another message. Okay, your answer isn't a number. What? It looks like a list of numbers. Oh. So whenever WebWork sees commas, it understands them as a list. So it's thinking you're telling it there's one, and then you're also telling it there's 120 atoms present. Okay, well obviously that can't happen, but whatever. You know, so whenever you put a list, it's expecting, or it's thinking that's two answers, not one. So you'll notice if I get rid of the comma and just write it as a number without any commas, bam, it's correct and it likes it. Okay, so web work can be frustrating from time to time, especially if you know you're putting in the right answer, you think you're putting in the right answer, and somehow a parenthesis off or a you put a comma or some other issues are on there. So know down here at the bottom, you can click on this email instructor button. Okay, and instead of sending an email from your email, it will send it directly from WebWork. So that way on our end as a professor, we can go in and actually see exactly the problem you were doing and what you've tried and everything else. Leave incorrect answers in there. Okay, so that way we can know what you've been trying. And then when you click on this, it even lets you put a little email in here. Write down what you tried. You know, say I did X, Y, and Z, and then maybe your professor realizes, oh, you know, your X step was incorrect, and you need to fix it this way. You know, so that way they get an idea of where you're getting your problem, your how you got your answer to the problem. Okay, so that's a huge, huge help to us, and then it'll also be a big help to you. So hopefully, you don't need it very often, but in case you do, it's there. All right, good luck.